cool! A spider! I love... Probably inspired by Black Arachnia coming off the heels of her resurgence in Animated, Arachnid is a devious spider lady with no remorse and a pun in her name. Known for being the direct antagonist to RC in Transformers Prime, the series of her debut. She doesn't play well with others. Even when she associates with the Decepticons, it isn't long until her interests evade the cause. Also in Japan, she apparently had a kink for Jack Darby. I'm not sure if I have permission to judge this. Arachnid transforms into a helicopter. No spider mode, but considering this is a Legion class figure, it would be too small for it. Also, I hate spiders, so it all works out. She's colored in that sexy, stealth black with silver in the windows, an entire torso and legs, and Decepticon logo face in the front. That'll really get on Megatron's black market mountain goat. The propellers spin freely and can be removed from the basic port on top, so you can get this, a fish with the fins ripped off. You can add the crossbow accessory to the side or the bottom, though any way you do it sets it off balance. I think it does an alright job, nothing too major, but there's panels to hide some gaps. If I had to complain because of its size, it's a little tricky to get in the mode. Otherwise, I don't have much to take issue with this toy. It is, however, perfect if... A man has fallen into the river in LEGO City. She's completely alright with being simple. Can't expect too much from a Cyberverse Legion class toy. Just a helicopter, and that's good. Good enough. Robot mode! Legion class figure certainly looks the part. Imperfections in design isn't surprising considering the engineering. There's only so much you can do. Now, let's pick it up and ruin any fun with the toy. If you're not careful, the ball joints seem to pop pretty easily, especially if you're transforming her. Despite having knees a gift to certain Legion figures, they only bend so far. And why does she have holes on her big bus? Well, at least it's not the deluxe, with the panels keeping the propeller spider legs in place. Still wobbles, but better than the tab that barely holds the larger version. She has arms with actual texture and depth, rather than polygons from Spyro. Also, she has a hoodie for Don't Notice Me, I'm Goth. I knew it, she's a witch! With the size, it's hard to believe they got such sharp lines and amazing paint on the face. Good shape, and even the eyes are painted. Nice work. Did someone say, ARTICULATION! Ball joints and arms, ball joint hips, and only a slight knee joint. Posability is basic, but I'm sure you're smart enough to realize that the norm is very simple. Legions are just pocket-sized people you might lose in the Taco Bell. Let's take a look at the accessories. Basic crossbow for many of the beast hunters of this class, with portholes and pegs to change this up. Think of it as Micro Siege. You can plug it into the shoulders and theoretically the hand, though the connection is horrendous. Not only that, you can remove the blades attached by a simple peg and plug it into the shoulder for a spinning shield. Wait, that's not Bruticus. Well, it can fit in the hand, but as the crossbow shows, it's useless. How the hand is designed, it just slips out. She's not the best to offer from the Beast Hunters line or even the Legion toys. While she doesn't have much to complain about, they do get in the way of having any joy. Ball joints popping off, arms are a trick to tuck and slide out to get into a mode, weapons don't stay into the hand, while arguably better than the Deluxe with less of a price, unless you need her, you're better off picking something else. Not the worst toy, but needed a fix. Plus, you don't want to know what the webs are made of. into the river of Lego City. And I think I know who pushed him. Spinster is such an underrated character. He's screaming full on Decepticon with his military style alt mode and colors invented just for the Decepticons. Try to prove me wrong. He did get more notice in the IDW comics and had a few figures but never seems to warrant retail mainline notice. Originally dual wielding target master, Spinister would rather take his time to sneak an attack on the Autobots. If you even notice the sound, it's probably too late and the assassin has you right where he wants you. And just 
just like his mainline release, he took his sweet time getting a figure of the size. Big thanks to Zero One Transfan for sending this out. Spinster transforms into a military style helicopter, probably not Black Ops with the colors of dark blue, purple, and an almost pink. Decepticon vibe check anyone? I feel like they could have gone brighter, but even then, how does this guy sneak up on people? It's like a ninja wearing a hazard vest. They got the essentials, even pulling a few new tricks like the feet used as the wings, but I'm starting to realize just how clunky this is. It's what I should have expected, but I get the realization seeing it in person. Oh good, a secondary canopy underneath like a spare tire. This is used for the robot mode to flesh and even out the legs, so more on this later, but to its credit, at least it gets one leg out of the way, so the front cockpit isn't too clunky managing two legs. You ever put a circle in clutter and call it a rocket launcher? Seems like that's what the arms tried to do. Looks like there's a porthole formed by the elbow, but I can't seem to get anything in it. Not even the blast effects seem to stick. The weapons fit well underneath the feet, adding more arsenal to the vehicle itself, and the helicopter propellers spin freely. Smaller one is alright, but the main one spins really well. Almost a surprise. Could even cut up vegetables for a smoothie. There's certainly things I like about this. Cockpit and front section have some good texturing. The tail end is smooth. Landing gear on the bottom, though. How useful is one anyway? And the colors, while clashing, are a standout. But I don't think it all comes together. It's like they had an idea of how much effort to put in and stop there. Keep in mind, and credit to Dr. Lockdown, if you're having trouble keeping the underside in place, rotate the hip and leg section. It should do the trick. And now you know. And knowing makes you feel better about yourself. <laughs> If this is what you expect from Spinister, then you're getting what you asked for. Don't get me wrong, nothing is a buzzkill, just not what I was hoping for. Robot mode! After a very finicky transformation, it's weird to see someone having three different main colors and still fit the nature of the Decepticons. Mostly a dark purple, this pinkish color, and dark blue. This is essentially what it should look like, but the complete separation of the lower body doesn't flow naturally. With his navy blue jeans, it seems either the Siege Decepticons are wearing pants or the Autobots are just naked. While you can feel the essence, the sheer soul of Spinister, they did make some changes, like the back tail sticking up like sand storm, and instead of one leg, they properly cloned it to have two. They're pretty well matched, even the front detail on the knee is mirrored. However, there's a landing gear on one side, and the one foot moves further forward than the other. Glad he's got a wind turbine on his back, at least evil is saving energy. Does it power up the elbow rockets? Back propeller seems to wobble, and with aggressive play, will move out of place. But with the transformation, the tab attempts to lock it upwards. And you can move it down, Blackout confirmed. Head is clearly a Decepticon, don't even try it. With the bright blue face mask sporting the spikes of a Decepticon logo extended to make antennas of a Bayverse Decepticon. It's so bad, it's daringly good. Did someone say, articulation? Ball jointed head, shoulders out and in, forward to back, rotation below, double elbow, wrist rotates, waist rotates, hips forward to back, out and in, rotation below, knee bend, foot tilt, another foot tilt, and up and down. Articulation is typical for the siege line, but with more foot movement, which is overly impressive. The amount of poses this guy can accomplish is mind-blowing, and shows the line is an upgrade to what we were getting from previous toys. Let's take a look at the accessories. While similar in shape and function, his two weapons with double firing mechanisms are colored in different primary colors. Both have pegs and holes allowing them to stack in either way as an additional gimmick and can cover the hand just a bit to feel embedded. Not the traditional target masters like the G1 similar to Scoop, however they are released separately, one with a new name in the Phantom Strike pack. He's covered in portholes including the bottom of the feet and small pegs for blast effects. Those ones behind the blades? Why? What's the point? 
It's as useful as a chair with no seat. Those are oddly specific scratch marks. The legs look like scratched up jeans and the arms feel out of place with the primary purple color. He's still a wonderful piece with nice details, but can you have too much of a good thing? Well, he's towering over most deluxe figures. Oh, look at the freak. Disclaimer, tall people are beautiful. It's true, there's more to love here. Spinster is exactly what he should be. I always wanted a spinster in the toy line, but I think my issue is with the long wait, I expected something more from it. Maybe brighter colors or something, but that's not to say he's bad. The engineering is advanced, even for a figure of his class. He helps add to the Decepticons and is something we need. It's about time we got him in the main toy line, and it's good he has the chance to be in major collections out there. And the award for most Decepticon ever... Oh look, another Shockwave. Do you think I'm gonna buy it? Do you know the answer to this riddle? Shockwave is infamous for his singular eye staring uncomfortably until the show gave him an eyebrow for some reason and for being the top scientist for the Decepticons. You probably know this by now, so rather than that, let's discuss the origin of this figure class. Coming off the heels of robots in disguise, the warrior class was originally the line for older kids or collectors who liked the look but wanted articulated toys without anything in the way, unlike the more gimmicky over saturated toy line, but moving to Cyberverse, something was off. Instead of continuing this idea to make the line more broad, Cyberverse threw in those gimmicks to the warrior class, and apparently ruined the very idea. It seemed older kids into the show were unwelcomed until the deluxe class came in even upgraded to be closer to the Praise Generations line. Shockwave is one of the first of four to be introduced, and one of eight key components to feature parts to build a Mac Adams figure. But with that, will Shockwave prove this line to be better than most? Can Cyberverse make up for its awful reputation? I don't know about Cyberverse, but maybe this Bumblebee Cyberverse Adventures theme, probably some short series they're working on, who knows. What I do know is that the backdrop is a good image of Cybertron, and the typical shape of the collector line with the box makes me optimistic. It does show you have to buy all eight to complete the Build-A-Figure, which only means Hasbro wants money and is am greedy. Shockwave transforms into a four-legged crab-walking tank, and after seeing this in motion on on the show, I can safely say I have nightmares of this above me while I'm sleeping. Just watching. Always watching. It's ridiculous. It's terrifying. It's ridiculously terrifying. A good representation of those horrifying videos with people contorting into unnatural crab people but with a gun on top. But honestly, I think the warrior did it better. The cannon seems to flow a lot better than the laser slapped on, and the stiff hose isn't helping the articulation. However, take the other gun, plug it on top, and you have... another gun. Cool! They don't have to try hard, but I appreciate the mandibles and silver paint on the front legs blending with the back. You could also take the blast effects to attach to the cannon and fight Master Chief with a baby scarab. I do like the texturing on top, smooth but with some thought, and the little antenna sticking out is adorable. Too bad it's on the monstrous deformity. Wait, if Galvatron's over there, then who is this? I don't get the issue with the original Generation 1 mode. Why are people so offended by submarines? Since seeing him more in the show, I actually admire and enjoy this alternative mode. There's something disturbing that actually fits the character, and it's pretty cool. Robot mode. feels familiar with the warrior class that I question if I even justified the purchase. Granted, it is better than the warrior, but I have it already. This needs to outdo it. In some aspects, I still like the warrior, but the clear winner is the deluxe. Fun tip, if you want, you can remove the gun entirely and disconnect the back to slide out the hose. While we're at it, the hose isn't too soft and just warps into place, so posing gets a little tricky. Good thing you can remove it from the gun to take it off entirely. For now, let's just take it out with what? 
I feel like I should apologize for this. Wonderful shaping with that striking purple and pink color and classic nods like the chest with an added honeycomb pattern highlighted in silver. An iconic eye with no stupid eyebrow in the way. Ears don't like to stay up, but let's count that as possibility. Speaking of which, there is one amazing crazy advantage this one has. We did it! The warrior has been defeated! Did someone say, articulation? Head rotates, ball joint shoulders, rotation below, elbow bend, wrist rotates, waist rotates, hip skirts, hips out and in forward, back rotation below, knee bend, foot forward to back, and tilt. So I just checked, only one wrist has the rotational joint, the other one is just solid. Posability is really good. You can tell why this is considered a modern deluxe with so much inspired from the generation's line, even with the same exact siege ports. In in fact, you could probably use this with your Siege collection without paying a leader price. He even comes with less clutter. Let's take a look at the accessories. Just quickly, he comes with the leg of Mac Adams with a ball jointed knee. He also comes with the mentioned cannon with a porthole and siege port on the front. Looks a little wide and doesn't blend with the arm, but it's functional. He also comes with another gun for no reason. Maybe this is Siege. It's fine, you can use it with other figures if you want, but I will say, I think this was in the Ultimate Class version of the Shockwave table. You can store it in the back. As a bonus and advantage over Siege, he also comes with two blast parts that combine and can be attached to either weapon. Blast Effect Eye Laser! <laughs> Interesting trick with the feet tucked in the arms. He could punch you and kick you with equal force. How logical is that, you little poopy? Why does he have two knees? Quick note, I did notice on my copy that when I opened it up, the legs were in reverse. And while I couldn't swap it from the waist, I disconnected the lower legs to swap them in place. Keep an eye for the foot tilt, as that'll tell you if it's right. As my first figure in Cyberverse with the Deluxe class, Shockwave combines the aesthetic of that Cyberverse look with the modern generation's quality. So while this is all familiar, combining it feels necessary. It's not too complex for older kids, it seems perfect for a general audience. See, it can work. If you're not into the show, I'm sure you'll still be into the collector line, but as something to try and open up, this is a good idea to release. It is good to know cat ears are logical. Why is he so mad at me? He's actually red in the face. Fire Drive, formerly Fire Bolt, Offshoot, or Sparks, was originally the target master in the 1987 repack of the Hot Rod figure. One of the top atomic physicists on his planet, he would usually keep to himself but dreamed of living on the edge. He awaited for excitement until the War of the Cybertronians led to their home of Nebulus. This young adventurer easily had a connection with Hot Rod and joined him in the fight for their worlds and many like it. Fire Drive has seen a few mainline toys, with Titans Returns naming the Titan Master after it, and Japan giving the Hot Rod his own Target Master. But with Siege, a proper figure was released for the international audience. Fire Drive transforms into a man doing some yoga pose with his legs straight up, calling himself some sort of firing weapon. This duo charge electrostatic photon cannon has two barrels and a 5mm peg at the bottom to attach to other figures. With Siege, most figures have multiple attachment points, but if you have the Titans Returns hot rod, you can catch up with bringing the set together. I would say use it with Power of the Primes Rodimus, but it looks like a toy even for him. That's not a weapon! This is a weapon! At least I'm not compensating for something. <laughs> with the small peg holes, you can technically add more weapons to the sides, and with the exposed peg at the bottom, you can add him to Battlemasters in this form. He's also got missile details in the feet, and attachment pegs for flare effects. He includes two cone-shaped flares that can be ported on the main figures as ricochets, blasts, or on the weapon itself. No, it's not a diamond-encrusted blender really adds to the power and feel of the figure. The blowback is his butt. Thought that was important to mention. Fire Drive is a basic weapon battle master. Really, it's what you would expect from a modern, simple version. Nothing to rag about unless weapons with limbs are an issue. Not to me, though. Robot mode. <laughs> Fire 
Hard Drive in Robot Mode seems to be one of the most confident looking molds for the Battlemasters. I think it's got better texturing to it, especially with the chest mold. Very small and very limited paint, but the mold looks good. Simplicity really shows when looking at the arms. There's just no paint to break up anything here, with the limited ball joints only in the shoulders and hips. It's like soap sculptures for limbs. It's just not a robot-y color, but really lets the body stand out. Paint on the chest and face is interesting, the face being solid red, but the chest and tiny symbol on the forehead is dull. Weapon on the back finishes it off pretty well, with the barrels looking like some sort of jetpack. You can even store the flares, but that's awkward. You can remove it and plug it into the arm, which is an interesting idea, and cuts out the middleman. Hey look, I could just hold my gun. How cool is that? They're evolving! Wait a minute, ab crunch? Best figure ever! There's a peg on the butt. Needed to be said. You can also hold him from the peg, and if you see someone holding their child like this, call the phone to tell of an abuse. Fire Drive is one of the most basic Battlemasters, but that's not really an issue. If the parts were painted better, especially with the white color, I think this would be a standout. As is, I don't have an issue. There's obviously better figures in the line, but if your hot rod is missing something, this is a figure to get. Also, I wanted them to do these guys for some time, and it's good that they're sold by themselves to add to your collection. Well, you could say he's not a head anymore. Where do you think he blows smoke out of? Are these intro jokes doing anything for you? I'm sure you'll tell me in a passive-aggressive way. A major politician, Blowpipe as a Nebulon, made himself known for his connections and know-how. Shafted in the spotlight by Zarek, his brother-in-law, despite doing a lot of the work himself. With his advantage of his political ideals, Blowpipe uses his way of thinking in combat as a target master. With his holder trigger happy, they may not see eye to eye with each other, as he'd rather just blast with no control. Blowpipe transforms into a dual impact Shatter Blast Compression Cannon with a person on the back who twerked so far, his booty snapped and his legs flew backwards. This weapon has two cannons, but it's easy to tell which is the primary one. While the smaller piece looks like it can work with the blast effects, it cannot, only the large. Speaking of the flares, he comes with the blast effects segmented in three sections with the back being detachable. You can slide it a bit forward to use the 5mm peg, and it's one of the better flare effects from these little guys, even adding a little more needed color. There's also two holes that aren't as interesting as the rocket feet, and you can't seem to port anything in it either. You can, however, use the arm port for more bow masters, use the peg to attach the figures including the appropriate trigger happy, and even use the hole at the bottom to attach more weapons, even another battle master. Even better, you can show the face and say, no politics here. Basic, but I think its mold is more interesting. I like the cannons and how uneven it is. A lot of the intentional detail is there if you're not distracted by a mushed robot. It's all right, robot mode. <laughs> Blowpipe in robot form feels a little plain, which is funny because he's got actual color compared to his wave mates. But the blue feels too plasticky for a plastic toy, and the gray is meh. I just wish it could break up more with the paint, but at least there's some silver and a logo. This base mold for Battlemaster repaints also has a peg on the front, which you can potentially add the ring blast effect, so, you know, objectively Warpath related. Pretty normal helmet, but with a green face and visor of a retro seasick sailor. Posability is simple with only ball joints in the arms and legs. I have the same problem as Fire Drive with this, that the arms and legs need some paint, but I don't expect much out of it. The cannon does attach to the back, but you you can remove it to plug onto the arm. You can also add more weapons, but maybe that's overboard. I wouldn't do it often, I'm noticing stress on the joints, but the option is there. I just realized with the line gimmick, you could probably attach more to the chest and make a super weapon from it but it cannot compare to the Autobot Wavemate's buttocks. Pretty simple, but not the most intriguing compared to those like Calibers. The colors aren't really that dull, but could be better than what we have. It's not a standout to the figures. I do like the green face, and if you have Trigger Happy, or you want to add to your collection of its toy line, then Blowpipe is alright. Otherwise, you aren't gonna miss much with the amount of redecos it has. Alright to skip or own. I don't discriminate, Peg Chest.
Sarah McLaughlin, why don't you make this puppy a sad commercial? The first animalistic battle master, Lionizer, is not a nice kitty. He's basically ready to detonate his rage on the first opportunity he could get. Usually, his wielder has to either keep up or manage this rage. I didn't even know this, even when I did research and was corrected like a moron. Lionizer did have an original toy, but unlike his wave mates, he was a target master with Rad in the Action Master line. Gross! I think it's gross. Is it like GoBots? Are we cool with it now? The original Lionizer was pretty much a gun, and you can see the traits with a laser-like aesthetic that can't port a siege blast effect. But instead, he becomes an RS Fire Steel Saber. The blade is alright, but the base is more like Human Alliance Steel Jaw. Other than the clunky base that really hurts the flow, the idea of the blade is alright, and separates from the average mush man with a gun. The joints are sturdy as the important ones snap into place, but you can move down the peg if you want another gun. Lionizer comes with a more unique flare effect with a slash motion. A wave of blue icicles you can put at the top of the blade. There's other weapons you can use it on, like Megatron's sword, and there is the usual peg holes, but it's meant for more specific places. You can, however, use it for some skid racing effect for the vehicles, and the figure works with the mainline toys like Sideswipe, Prowl, and... Spinister? Now that I think of it, this was probably the reason why these are Battlemasters over the original Target Master name, given more are melee weapons than blasters. Pretty simple blade, but anytime I want to admire it, I look at the messy section and I'm disappointed. Granted, the other Battlemasters kind of do the same thing, but they kind of have their own thing going on. I get these are simple, but that doesn't mean it isn't something obvious to the style. Robot mode. Lionizer transforms into a more lion animal form, if you can get that from the name. Although it doesn't have a mane, so I'm guessing it's probably female. Would be nice if there was more paint on the limbs, but the black gives it that panther vibe. Wakanda forever! Prowl in the night with this dark black armor in the shadows. Just forget the silver head and the giant blade on top! I guess this is where the cannon comes into play, and really, I'm not arguing with a lion cannon, I think that's something the military is missing out on. You can fold it back as a tail, or take it off and plug it using the port. Awkwardly, though. I don't get why Blowpipe in this has a port too small for anything. What's the point? Why the prank? Ah, good. A figure with farting flares. Seems like He-Man can either wield his animal or ride it into battle. Oddly enough, the colors are inaccurate. I guess they thought the black looked better than the original orange, but I think the color was a missed opportunity that would have let it pop. If you want, there's an alternate version that comes with a dash of green. What's that? A pack was announced with the correct colors as I was working on this review? Thanks, Hasbro! for making me sound like an idiot. Here comes the comments anyway. Basic ball joint limbs, and that tiny Autobot symbol is cute, but I don't want to get near the face. If you never cared for Lionizer, you'll probably skip this to get the more recognized iconic characters, but Lionizer is something different from the start of the class. He introduced more different designs that can be used, and that they weren't just looking at the original Target Masters. If you want multiple to make a pack, I say this is a harmless purchase for anyone. They say good Lionizer. But do they mean it? Remember this guy? Remember when he introduced Bayhem to a new audience? Thanks! I think. As a little kid, I had just gotten into Transformers and had a good time too because they had just announced a full-on live-action film inspired by the idea. I went into the theater and witnessed the very first of this new breed of robots as this character storms in. Massive, especially considering the origins of the Micromaster, this out-of-hand machine is destructive, powerful, yet can be absolutely quiet in his approach. In taking orders from Starscream, he was never truly happy, but what kept him on track was the lead-up to reviving their glorious leader. I'm not gonna repeat this for every review, but the Studio Series figures comes with the background. This one resembles the very first 
seen with the Operation Base, iconic for his chaos. Blackout transforms into the recognizable 4500X MH-53 helicopter. That is, if you can get the panels lined up. Nearly a shelf warmer with parts you can't expect to tab in right. A little bit of a mess, but I happen to be alright with the majority. This thing is huge! I'll try to get most of it shown, but with the width of the blades, I might just fold it up for some space. Look, I'm not complaining. There's just more to love, because this is nearly a model. The round cockpit- Oh, I'm just screaming, it's a Decepticon! Fly, you fools! Would well, be nice if he had a hologram pilot, but rather you get his head going tee Some details highlighted with paint applications including the logos with his very name and... 4500X, something's not right. That's better. The main propeller spins, but sadly there's a lot of friction. Good for the robot mode, but it would be cool to feel the massive propellers rotate. The back one does, and is his primary weapon that detaches, making things awkward. Also, there's a peg on top, so you can add Scorp knock, and there's a scorpion on the tail of the plane! Check out the rivets! Detail work! These things! These other things! It has become apparent that I'm not knowledgeable when it comes to helicopter mechanics and their functions. All I know is BIG HELI COOL! There's appropriate landing gear and you can store Scorponok underneath the tail! Though it's made abundantly clear this is not a good look for it. The third party update does have a removable cover, but this is just the pure Hasbro toy. It's not even completely hollow to keep the size, which is amazing. I have to do this. If you open up the top, you can GOT TO THE CHOPPER! I can't get over how big this is. Put a Bowmaster near it and it looks like a pilot. Every figure seems to shrink like it just got out of the wash. Even the Deluxe and Voyagers cower before it. I miss old leader figures. I'm guessing this is on purpose, although necessary for the transformation, but the propellers going back? Nice nod. Though, they open up in a very specific way, and all the propellers match, so keep your attention on it. Visually stunning, and so much fun just to hold and swing around. I feel like I'm recounting the film's first scene, while just enjoying the vehicle as itself. Large and amazing to look at. Robot mode. This figure is certainly clunky in sections, such as the arms made from origami, and feet with shoes of tall sandals. The torso's got some junk, but to its credit, it does feel like it's trying. And certain things are appropriate, including what is believed to be the massive EMP giving him severe back pain. Looking head-on, that's pretty much the major things I would change. As inhumane as this sounds, I'd cut the webbing in his toes, and the hefty arms with backwards missiles, it seems. But there's so much going on that it's easy to get distracted. I love the torso and recognized canopy. Reminds me when alt mode kibble was acceptable and felt like a transformer. The legs, while skinny and chicken legged, are detailed like crazy. I even love the panel and knee pad that can move to change dimensions. I don't even mind the clamp hands, though it seems like he's that guy. You know, the one where everyone's trying to get work done and he's in the back doing the chicken dance. That head sculpt is wonderful. It's got the spiked insect Decepticon design with red beady eyes Prime might want to tear apart. The metallic color would be nice if it didn't feel applied for the sake of it. And didn't stand out from the rest of the figure where details are mostly unpainted with the sand blue color pattern. Even the back of the head just looks weird. Did someone say, ARTICULATION! Ball jointed head, shoulders out and in, forward to back, rotation below, elbow bend, hands move, fingers open, hips out and in, forward to back, rotation below, knee bend, other knee bend, foot forward to back, and foot tilt. Posability is... It's a good thing he looks good just standing there. There's plenty in the legs, even additional stability from the knee, but this hip flap barely gets out of the way, and the shoulders can kiss a dog's anus. The in and out joint just looks so awkward, and thanks to the shoulder stuff that restricts any joy. 
just like quality control. It's tricky to love, but it's hard to hate with this powerful stance. He loses the size much like how the original was a small Voyager, especially compared to Megatron, but he was tall anyways. Plus, considering modern leaders are now borderline in the class, and his incredible heft, I feel like it works, and I can't argue with the majestic cape. It's official, every good villain has a cape. You can open this entire thing up and he could look bigger against predators. You could also flip up the gun for tent weapon. Let's take a look at the accessories. He comes with a back propeller that spins freely and was used in the film. Plugs into a basic port on the side and I prefer plugging it in this way to keep the weapon portion forward. Just what we need, more stuff in the arms. He also has another character, Scorbnock. Awesome way to have him in the line in this size without making a new class or people complaining about buying a super small deluxe. Painted simply with silver, gold, and red eyes, and articulation is limited to the arms and tail. He can hold it, but I don't think scorpions like it. Or you can fold up the arms and tail to attach it to the back and detach much like in the film. Pretty obvious, but it's more to look at than, ooh, lousy panels. Wow, a fidget spinner? How special. I've gotta mention that kibble sells pretty nicely with the... Let's call them intakes. I'm not gonna bother. Another good thing is the main gray color that borders from original Blackout or Grindor in the second film. So initially, you can use them for both characters, but it's Blackout for me. Can't resist the original cast. This figure is nowhere near perfect. Transformation is difficult, although I seem to take not too many issues with it. And the robot mode has kibble placed in areas that just affect the look. But there's something about the look that exceeds my major complaints and keeps them to be nitpicks. If you get the upgrade kits or third party remixes, I'd say Blackout just has a wonderful essence to him that really makes him feel powerful. I don't have an issue with having him in my collection and honestly, he needed a brand new toy from his previous mainline figure. If you can get with the transformation, either mode is amazing. Even he knows to come in with a boom. But that's also the Bayverse style. What the hell is this ugly thing? And why is he handsome? Starting off in Revenge of the Fallen with this character trait of floating menacingly, this communications officer made his way on Earth in Dark of the Moon. The loyal Soundwave and his minion Laserbeak work under the leader without question. The faithful Decepticon has no remorse even for his own kind. All that matters is getting the job done. His personality is heavily inspired by his Generation 1 form, and he's even voiced by Frank Walker himself. Soundwave transforms into a Mercedes-Benz SLS AMG, completely coated in a nice, shiny silver, highlighting the beautiful design of the Mercedes vehicle, with paint on the front, headlights, backlights, and even the rims. But why isn't he a cassette player? Yeah, good luck with that. Such an elegant-looking car is special for a monstrous Decepticon general. That silver really makes it pop and feel more real. Reminds me of how the older figures had this dull gray color they were experimenting with. You know, the one that ruined Sideswipe. Rolls pretty well, and you could bring out the head if you'd like. Sure, nobody asked for this, but don't be a hater. It's not without its flaws. I can't seem to get the back panel to tab flesh with the top, and the transparent plastic ruins the robots in disguise effect. Not sure how that one got past Sam, Carly, and the Autobots. I guess they're just stupid. There's a few labels molded into the back with the logo, SLS, and AMG, as well well as a nice proud Mercedes logo at the front bordered by the black behind it, letting it shine. You could also take laser beak, flip up the legs to reveal a tab, and plug it to the top for flying Mercedes mode. In theory. I've heard of bugs on the windshield, but this is ridiculous! Please laugh. Sure, it's not a cassette player, actually not sure who would have expected that, but as a beautiful car infiltrating the enemy under their nose, why not do it in style? This is awesome to look at, thanks to the good choice with the paint. Robot mode.
goes from a proud blue iconic Decepticon nearly anyone could recognize into generic Decepticon number 17. Mostly silver, a dark metallic, and duller gray for some of the softer parts, removing any speck of blue even from the on-screen appearance. I guess Soundwave always looked like the essential Decepticon from its original series, and I guess this one's doing the same for its own. So does that count as purely G1? My denial wants to say yes, but I have to admit, for another spiky gray Decepticon, Soundwave somehow manages to make it work. But that's just the Soundwave way. I love the possible speakers in the arm, and chest that you can argue outlines the shape of the former chest. It's like there's remnants of the past here, you just have to really look at it, but as another movie versus Decepticon, it still works. I will say the backpack is large, but it does move out of the way. The shoulders are supposed to peg in using the hole in the wheels, but they slip out pretty easily. Keep an eye on the tire and make sure it doesn't pop out. Also, watch out for the hands. There was some flash plastic that wouldn't let it come out. Other than that, he feels really good. I'm not just saying that because I wanted to Dark the Moon Soundwave since the old toy line. Soundwave got shafted from the mainline release, but he actually feels pretty solid. I'm loving the details inside the chest, and look at the smooth thighs. Oh, I feel I should hate this, but I love it. I'm so torn with you. That face is pretty ugly though. Not like in the soft gray in the back of the head, but I get why it's unpainted. The face does look right, but what was wrong with the revenge design? It looked like a mouth plate that opened up. Now he just looks like a piranha. Did someone say, ARTICULATION! Ball jointed head, another hinge, arms out and in, forward and back, panels move, rotation below, elbow bend, ball joint hips, rotation below, and knee joint. With his wide feet keeping him up, and wide shoulders of an alpha male, Soundwave is a pure chad and looks pretty good in poses. Despite the two joints in the head, the neck is pretty restricted, which is unfortunate given his additional figure. Let's take a look at the accessories. Soundwave comes with laser beak, and Barricade didn't come with Frenzy, what the hell? It's almost completely unpainted with the red eyes ending up so out of place. If it was darker, I wouldn't mind, but it just feels so barren. The details are nice though, with a good wingspan, turrets, and that disgusting head that I can't take seriously. You know the fish with the bulgy eyes? What's with these two and looking like fish? There's also a clip you can use to attach to Soundwave's arms and watch Mojo's most iconic duo seem so fitting. Watching them stare at each other if his head will allow it, you can hear him give orders. Or are they talking bad about me? Say it to my face, asshole! I think Soundwave certainly deserves a weapon or two, but that would be overkill when you can woe your enemies with sex appeal. There's so many aspects of Soundwave I should either despise or just feel meh about. Soundwave is such a major name in the Transformers, and seeing him as another great Decepticon, even in the films, feels like they almost dropped the ball. But, and I'm being honest, this figure is probably my top tier figure in the Studio Series line. Not only does it continue a toy line that fell short, but he feels amazing. I've had issues with others in the same line, but Soundwave is just impressive. I totally recommend the superior toy. But why does his face have to look like a demigorgon relative? Do you want to build a solar power tower? It doesn't have to be a solar power tower. Answer the question about the solar power tower! Known as an Autobot Master Builder, Grapple is an optimistic architect with a passion. His creations were his work of art. Unfortunately, the war between the Cybertronians doesn't allow much free range. In his efforts, his work is usually put in the construction of what's most important for the time, putting him in a depressive mood. However, he does connect well with the supportive Hoist, who offers a creative touch to his projects. Grapple gets a new toy in the Siege follow-up, Earthrise, continuing the Generations War for Cybertron toys. Quick note with the box, the Earthrise backdrops have a piece of a map and a transparent red decoder you can use to see the already visible lines. Smart. Grapple transforms into a construction crane, very similar to his original style of his Generation 1 alt mode. Just like it, you can pretty much tell what's what. 
Robots in disguise didn't really seem to catch on here. Oh yeah, normal retro truck here, down to the bubble shape of certain components and squared windows, nice clean bumper, headlights, windshield wipers, and I don't know if the shoulder bits are supposed to be seats, but let's just say it is and give them extra credit. Even looking at the horns on top, you might not know what era of truck this is, I'm sure someone's saying 80s because 80s toy, but you could make a guess and I wouldn't argue. 40s? Sure, why not? But grapple is an allegory for high school, sure it looks good from the start but then you look back and it's messy and you start to panic having an existential crisis on asking her to the prom and if she says no it's gonna be the worst day ever and you'll cry at the punch bowl listening to Green Day over the speaker watching the cute couple stance I mean it gets messy. Arms are right there, and you know what every piece will go to, but it's more blocky than the original toy, so while it's obvious, especially with the front sticking out, taunting me on what we could have had, the result does come together to make a fair looking crane. And with some key details, it's like they were given the task to do the original, but make it good with what they got. Of course, we've got to talk about the pegs on the back. For those who don't know, a lot of people are having trouble pegging the back in or taking them out because it's too tight followed with potential breakage issues with the peg because it's only stuck on the wall of plastic. I think it's tight so it doesn't slip out while the crane is holding something, but it's still recommended that you either sand down the peg or modify it to some capacity. I just barely pegged the thing in and it seems to be fine, but look into a more safer approach. Now how can we ignore the beautiful crane? You can lock it in fully back and the hook can fit right between the arms, but let's extend it out for the full effect. Looks nice, and you can use either the hook, which no complaints here, or flip it back, expose the porthole, and use the grapple claw to save Toy Story 3. I'll name it Gladys. It could go up, down, spin around. There's even a clip for ramps to attack for the full construction playability. You can also store all the weapons with the hose tapping to the side sitting well with the arm, and the gun just plugs to the side. You can also store the claw, but it looks like a face hugger got stuck. There's also additional portholes on the side and siege blast pegs on the crane arm. You can even take the gun, plug it to the crane, and demand Optimus takes your art seriously. It's not a phase! Just to note, these hydraulic lifts look like they come out. The details even look like a hollow panel is behind it, but it's all one piece teaser. You. Mine looks like the actual cylinders are glued in, so inferno remold anyone? It's also pretty small, especially compared to the Reveal the Shields toy. We still love you, but uh, this is pure grapple. Given what they came from, grapple does a pretty good job at updating it close to the original. While the Kramo could look better, what they're doing here is actually a lot of fun. Just remember the peg issue. Robot mode. <laughs> clearly representing the working man of the Autobots. With the help of his construction vehicle alt mode bringing in that theme and the orange color, it's hard to look past. But whoa, what a solid looking figure. Now I understand the caution stripes. It's to warn for oncoming sexiness. Sure, there's hollow bits if you want to be a nag, but look at the shaping of the arms and legs. So smooth and classy. Not much is painted in, but I think that's the intention to outline some of the details in the cartoon. It's subtle, but really works for him. I also love the torso that represents the alt form with the complete cab. It even bubbles over to give him a slight beer gut. Sure, the backpack sticks out and doesn't do the majestic collapse of the masterpiece, but it doesn't need to, and with it, crane face. Deploy master in disguise turtle club mode. Surrounded by a box because he wants attention, the head is free to rotate on the joint with easy access. And what a nice mold despite his face looking like he's disappointed by his own farts. The blue eyes are too thin, leaving the yellow seeping through. And while people might prefer the black helmet, I'm much happier with the orange. Did someone say, articulate it? Head rotates, shoulders out and in, forward to back, rotation below, elbow bend, waist rotates, hips out and in, forward to back, rotation below, knee joint, and foot tilt. Posability is insanely good, and it gets even better when you dislocate the feet. 
so much you can do, the crane arm doesn't even get in the way. I will say the panel in the arm disconnects easily, but I'm not letting it ruin my fun. Also, he is pretty short, but with those joints mentioned, he gains super shoes. Let's take a look at the accessories. Grapple comes with a small hose nozzle you can store in the back from the tab. You can flip around the hand, and using the porthole, it plugs in to create a more cartoon accurate version. Huh. Don't know how these pro builders work with just one hand. With the hands flipped back, you can do so much with it. Maybe add combiner hands and realize this is a rookery mold, obviously. He also comes with the handgun you can store in the back with the side pegs, and it's good for him, but it's also generic enough to be added to a character who needs it more. I mean, he has other weapons, and Sunstreaker is forced to recycle the backpack. I could tell who's the favorite. He also comes with the claw that you could store on the side and look dumb, or give him a claw tail, maybe even the claw face. Why isn't Clawface a Transformer yet, Hasbro? I'm loving the claw. It's both ridiculous fun, yet seemingly practical given the character. Now we just need to give Prowl a helicopter hat. He's covered in portholes for weapons, including the side of the arms, legs, feet, and using the crane the back. He's also got a bunch of ports for blast effects that are not even between the sides with his one nipple and multiple points on the crane. You can completely siege him up. Uh, earthrise him up. Weapons. I still love the Reveal the Shields toy and his mass is impressive, but I love how this moves and looks like the legit character. You can also flip down the crane through the legs and remember that gif? You know the one. You're not a Transformers fan if you haven't seen the gif. Grapple is such an amazing figure. I wasn't sure about these Generations figures going so much in the direction of the cartoon, but now I realize this is what we need. I love when Generations try to rework characters, but this screams Grapple and does a good job at it. Such a fun toy and a great way to begin this new sub-theme. Sure, it's mostly just the name and losing the Cybertronian modes that they were losing already, but Grapple proves that they're working hard to make amazing figures. This is a simple guide, but an amazing toy. To clarify, Winnie the Pooh wants his ears back.